in the 1980s and really late, late 1970s, the technical aspect of two turntables, a mixer, being able to bring across the same type of excitement, even a little bit more so that a band used to bring across, was entirely new. There was a record by the Jacksons that was called, the name of the song was called Music's Taken Over on the Going Places album in 1977. I liked the record. I went to this event and I kept hearing this record go on and on before Michael Jackson comes in with the beginning of the song. I was wondering like, how did they make it? How did they extend it? I mean, I was so naive. I was thinking that the record had to be this big and all the DJ was doing was actually going back and forth and back and forth for about 15 to 20 minutes. And um, that, that curiosity is the one that sparked this particular cat. And these were much of the records I was hearing on the radio, but also kind of like spruced up by the DJ in live action. And rap was actually the vocal that went on top of when the DJ extended a break, the MC would fill that break up. And so that even caught my attention because it reminded me of what sportscasters were doing with their play-by-play. -play. Or an auctioneer would, would do when they tried to sell you something at a fast rate. Chuck would make his own records to play on his own radio show. And um, one of those records was Public Enemy Number One. It was done to the beat of Blow Your Head by the JVs, uh, by James Brown and the JVs. And uh, it, was the, it was the overdubbed version with the Moog on it. The, the, the technology of that was actually two tape decks. Two tape decks and, and then pause button, tape. pause button, which was a, a thing that when cassette players became more prevalent and people start really not just cassette players, cassette player AM, FM radio in one unit, yeah. which allowed a person to record the radio station. Yeah. So a lot of times people would record the radio station and make certain pause button tapes and just pause it. And you know, you, you, basically it's like a sampler. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever done that. That's some hood stuff that we used to do in the city. You'd get a break and you let it go for so many bars, you'd stop it and then you play this one and then when it get to the break, you start it again and eventually you have a loop and then you take it out and put it in the play part of the cassette and then you add stuff mm -hmm. to it as you go along. And, and that technique was born out of the fact that people wanted to hear the radio station's music without the commercials. So people would actually line up, pause, you know, rewind, pause it at a spot when they hear a record that they like, you know, kind of like, oh, that's that record. And they never would ever catch it at the beginning, but they would catch it somewhere at the meat of the record. And so when they played that tape from the radio stations that played that music, they would have a, a great tape, uh, you know, pause exactly on the beat, on points. And, like um, a big mix tape. Mm -hmm, yeah. And that's where, like, I don't know if you know, like, in the 80s when they had that super fast editing style, like Latin Rascal style, the, the, the freestyle of techno thing where they did, 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 that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that came out of the pause button revolution. I mean, if you check out, I don't even know if you could because it's impossible to find this. When I made that pause tape for Public Enemy Number 1, which became the, the, the thing that Rick Rubin wanted to sign, if you took my vocals off, you would hear it go off beat many a time. I mean, off beat, kind of, you know, but the vocal on top of it is what kind of like united all of it together. Well, even if you listen to the, the single that was done, yeah, the drum programming goes off beat the whole way through, but it always starts on the one correctly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, starts on the one that, in other words, it's unquantized totally, mm -hmm. except the one. So everything in between is totally off. So if you try to mix another song with it, you're having a hard time. It's like, ah, oh. and he's speeding up the other record down and trying to get it to work. And then it's like, bam, it comes back on the one. It's like, ah. Oh. The alchemy of all, this, all of it coming together, like gumbo, is the end result sometimes defined it into an area that was really undefinable until you got to that end result.